Good evening. We do not have any first time visitors, but would like to welcome and acknowledge uh, returning visitors. And as I call your names, will you please stand? Returning to study with us, we have Brenda Love of Cincinnati, Ohio, and she is the sister of Fred Allen. And we have Charles Long of Washington, D.C., and he is the brother of Kenny Long. Welcome and thank you both. I'd also like to welcome and acknowledge our visiting branch school members. And as I call your names, will you please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Visiting with us from Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Dean and Trustee Member, Dr. Fred Allen, from High Point, North Carolina, the Public Relations Director, Dr. Donald Roberts, and Dr. Priscilla Roberts, from Memphis, Tennessee, Dr. Bernetta Marshall Anderson, from Fontana Moreno Valley, a medical doctor, Dr. Marlon Farley, and from Southeast Los Angeles, Dr. James Thomas. Welcome and thank you all. We're always happy and glad to see everyone that has come out to study with us this evening. And our speaker for the evening would be the Dean of the Albuquerque, New Mexico Branch School and also a member of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Fred Allen, Jr. That testimony that he gave, I feel was true and genuine. When I sat in the, at his feet, the things he said, I went back and verified it. I checked him out. And I became convinced that the things he said and he taught was true. And because of that, my stand or my testimony to you is based upon what he taught. I know a lot of people told me that I wouldn't go someplace, I wouldn't travel some places, because a lot of people don't agree with what I have to say. That's not my problem. The founder taught me the truth. And I believe it's the truth, and I stand on it. And I want to try to go into some things and why I say what I say and why I make the testimony or hold the testimony that I have. I want to point out a few statements that Dr. Kennedy made. He often referred back to the time when he left Springfield, Ohio to go to Cincinnati in 1936. He told the, the students there in Springfield, if you understood what I've taught you, you would die that way. He repeated that same statement in his last lecture he gave in 1975, December the 21st. If you understood what he taught, the things he said, you're going to die that way. My conviction of what he taught has not wavered, has not changed. He made some other statements. 
They are hold very true. There were many things he said to convince me that what he taught, how he taught it, was genuine and it was true. I have no disagreements with it. On top of that, I do not feel that anybody can teach anything greater than what he taught. I've asked the questions, and things were said to me that this was being said now was a, an improvement. I feel that the founder taught us the truth, and we can't improve upon truth. That's why I take the stand I take. Now, I know a lot of people might disagree with what I have to say. That's fine. The school is based upon that you didn't have to accept everything that's taught in this school. But the things that Dr. Kennedy taught, if it's true and genuine, I don't see any way that anybody can improve upon it. That's my feeling. That's my conviction. Now, because I say that, I'm going to go into some of the things on why I take the stand I do take. You can accept it or reject it. You can call me and talk to me about it. I have no problem with that. You can come see me if you want to. That's fine, too. But I want to take the time, if you, since you've given me the time, I want to try to express some of the things that I feel that the founder taught and why he taught it and why some of the things are being said now that I don't go along with. And I think it's fair to allow Dr. Kennedy himself paraded before us many ministers. He said if a man came down, if Satan himself came down, he would allow him to address us. And he told us to listen to what he had to be said, what was said. And I think that's fair too. First of all, I want to, and I preface my open remarks by saying that Dr. Kinley, many times, many times, started his lecture off by talking to him, I want to talk to you about the purpose of Yahweh concerning the Father and the Son. And I feel if we don't know what the purpose is, we don't know how to go about to follow the conclusion of matters or how the thing starts and ends. Now, Dr. Kennedy labored with us about Yahweh being spirit. He called it pure spirit. He many times went to this chart. He told us to take everything off the chart, just leave a cloud on the chart. He went to the blackboard and drew a cloud. That represented the limits and bounds, the source and substance from which everything comes from. Now he said in that state, there was no descriptive shape and form no descriptive shape and form. There was not a circle, triangle, square, any kind of shape and form in that state of pure spirit. Then he went about to show that, that in that pure spirit state, that he purposed a purpose. And after he purposed a purpose, then he went about to execute that purpose. He had purpose within himself. And I'm going to have you try to, I want you to read for me. Oh. 
Ephesians 1 9. Suppose you read for me first Ephesians 3 and 1 through 3, and then go to 1 9. Ephesians 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. For this cause. For this I, cause, now this is Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesians. Read. I saw. I saw. The prisoner of Yahshua the Messiah. The, the prisoner of Yahshua the Messiah. After he was convinced on his way down to Damascus, he became a prisoner to Yahshua Messiah. His testimony, I didn't want to know nothing else but him crucified, yea, raised from the dead. That was his testimony. And he went about to teach that. Read on. For this cause. For I, this cause. I saw. I saw. The prisoner of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. For you of the nation. For you of the nation of the Gentiles, read. If ye have heard of the ministry of the grace of Yahweh. If you have heard of the ministry of the grace of Yahweh, read. Which is given me to you word. Which is given me to you word. What was given to him was not for himself, but also for them. Read. How that by revelation. How that by revelation. Now Paul says over in 2 Corinthians 12 chapter, he said that he must come to visions and revelations of Yahweh. But now he says, how that by revelation, which means at the time he did not know this. Read. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. The mystery. The mystery. Read. As I wrote before in a few words. As I wrote before in a few words. Read on. Whereby when ye read. Whereby when you read. Ye may understand my knowledge. You may understand my knowledge. In the Messiah. In the in, Messiah. In the mystery. In the mystery. Of the Messiah. Of the Messiah. Now we're talking about the mystery of the Messiah. And he's talking about his knowledge in the mystery of Yahweh. Read. Of the Messiah. That the Gentiles. That the Gentiles. Should be fellow heirs. That they should be fellow heirs with the Jews. That's what he's talking about. Now I go, we want to find out what he wrote before. In a few words. First chapter. Ephesians 1 and 9. Will you please start that at the, at the fourth verse, please? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now this is what he says there. He says, according as he has chosen us, those that have accepted Yahshua Messiah, they've been chosen. According as he has chosen us, read, in him, in him, before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. So now that means that Yahweh foreknew before the foundation of the world. Who's going to be sitting here? Who's going to receive and who's going to reject? Read. That we should be holy. That we should be holy. And without blame. And without blame. Before him in love. Before him in love. Read. Having predestined us unto. Now he had having predestined us unto. Read. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. Or the adoption of children. By Yahshua the Messiah to by, himself. By Yahshua the Messiah. He said by Yahshua the Messiah. We, we've been adopted by Yahshua the Messiah. Read. To himself. Unto himself. So we got to come through Yahshua side to come back unto the Father. Read. According to the good pleasure of his will. According to the good pleasure of what? Of his will. Of his will. Now this is, this is what pleases the, the Father. See, according to his good will. Read. To the praise of the glory of his grace. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Read. Wherein he hath made us accepted. Wherein he has made us pure. Made us a settled read. Accepted in the beloved. Accepted in the beloved. Yeah. In whom we have redemption. Now it says in whom we have redemption. We've been redeemed. See, we've been redeemed. Read. Through his blood. Through his blood. He didn't shed his blood for nothing. He shed his blood for our redemption. 
Read. The forgivenesses of sin. For the forgiveness of sin. According read. to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. Read. Wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom. And prudence. And prudence. Having made known unto us. Now he said, now having made known unto us, he's talking about the apostles first. Having made known unto us, the apostles read. The mystery of his will. The mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure. According to his good pleasure. Which read, he hath purposed in himself. Which he had purposed within himself. And we're talking about what he purposed within himself before there was any shape or form. Read that in the dispensation of the fullness of time that in the dispensations of the fullness of time he, at a point of time read he might gather together in one he is going to gather together in one all things somebody's going to be gathered together unto him he is not saving himself Somebody's gathered unto him. It's according to his purpose. Read. He might gather together in one mm -hmm. all things in the Messiah. All things in the Messiah. Both so, which are in heaven. That which is in heaven. And which are on earth. And that which is on earth. That means the angelic realm and the physical mankind. Read. Even in him. Even in him. So something being gathered unto him and then Okay, now after everything is together, that's what it says there about, let's see, what verse, 11, 10 verse? Okay, read on. In whom also we have obtained. In whom also now we have obtained. An inheritance. An inheritance. You receive something. Read. Being predestined. Being predestined. According to the purpose. According to his purpose. Of him who worketh all things. According to him that worketh all things. After the counsel. Of his own After will. the counsel of his own will. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old. Also give me now Romans 16, 25. Read. Remember the former things of old. Now here the, the prophet Isaiah. Yahweh Elohim speaking through that prophet. It says, remember the former things of old. Read. For I am El. Now he says, I am El. And there is none else. He already knows there's nobody equal to him. So there's nothing he's proven to himself. He already knows he has the advantage of everybody else. He's not proving anything to himself. He knows he's the greatest. He's trying to let you know that he is. Read. I am Elohim. I am Elohim. And there is none like me. There's none like him. Why? Read. Declaring the end. He declared the end. From the beginning. Right from the beginning. And so if I don't know what happened in the beginning, I don't know what's going to be in the end. Now there is a beginning and an end to his purpose. There's no beginning and end to Yahweh, but a beginning, to, a beginning and end to his purpose. Read. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. Read. And from ancient times. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Say, the things that are not yet done. Saying. My counsel shall stand. My counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. Oh, you don't have to have somebody help me. No, he says, I will do all my pleasure. Read. Calling the eagle from the east. Calling the eagle from his, which, which, which is the Messiah. Now, let me go back up here now. Now this Yahweh, after purpose, this purpose within himself, then he goes about to execute or to carry that which he purposed out. Now, I'm saying that when Dr. Kelly taught this, he said, Yahweh is pure spirit. Then Yahweh took on a shape and form. That was the beginning of his purpose. He backed it up by saying, Proverbs 8, 22. 
Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way. Now, he said, as Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, he said, wait a minute. That's the beginning of his purpose. So we got to look at this. When Yahweh took on this shape and form, that was the beginning of his purpose. His purpose also has an end. So when you carry that whole thing out and it concludes, comes to the end, the conclusion of it, then we, get, we have a beginning and we have an end. That's why you have, well, let me, let's back it up. See? So that was the beginning of his purpose when he took on that shape and form. Finish reading there in Proverbs. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way. Read. Before his works of old. Before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting. Now he said, you know, he was set up from everlasting. From the beginning. From the beginning. Or ever the earth was. Before ever the earth was. When now the, back, I want to back it up. See, go give me uh, uh, Colossians 1. Pick it up at the 14th verse. Then go give me Revelations 3, 14. Colossians 1 and 14. Mm -hmm. In whom we have redemption. Now it says in whom we have redemption. We have redemption. We're being redeemed. From what? Do we know what we've been redeemed from? Maybe we don't know what we've been redeemed from. Let me have Romans 1.18. <clears throat> for I am not a... For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven. He said, now for the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven. Read. Against all impiety. Against all impiety. And unrighteousness of men. And on unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now we're, we're looking at what we're being redeemed from. We're being redeemed from the wrath of Yahweh. How are we going to be redeemed? By stepping the blood of Yahshua's side. That's what's going to atone for it. That's how we're going to be redeemed. That's how we're going to be saved from his wrath. Go back and read. <clears throat> Over there in the Colossians 1 and 14. Right, read that, read. In whom we have redemption. In whom we have redemption. Read. Through his blood. Through his blood. We're redeemed through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Even the forgiveness of sin. Read on, I'll come back to it, read on. <clears throat> Who is the image of the invisible L? Who is the image? of the invisible L. Joshua is the image of the invisible L. Read. The firstborn of all creation. He said what? The firstborn. The firstborn. So when Yahweh took on this shape and form, that was the firstborn of all creation. Dr. Kennedy was saying that Yahweh took on this shape and form, Yahweh went out to create business. So that's the beginning of a purpose. That's the beginning of the creation <clears throat> when Yahweh took on shape and form. Now, when Yahweh takes on that shape and form, then he goes, when Yahweh Elohim, in that shape and form, he goes about to create the creation. Both the angelic and the physical creation. I know it's awful quiet in here. But it's fine. Hope you're listening. We're going to need help. What we, we're going to need all we need to stand in these last days. I think a lot of us didn't do what we.
they didn't take us as far. We didn't learn hardly nothing in church. How far did he take us? Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Pick up at the 23rd verse and read down for me, please. I'm going to come back. I got a lot of things on my mind. I hope I get to them, but if I don't, if you already permits, I'll be back. Hebrews 12 and 23. To the general assembly and congregation of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to Yahweh the judge of all, and to the spirits Hebrews of justice. 12. I hear you started 23 tonight. General assembly. And congregation of the firstborn. And the congregation of the firstborn. Which are written in heaven. Which are written in heaven. And to Yahweh. And to Yahweh. The judge of all. Look, you're coming to Yahweh, the judge of all. Read. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. And then you're coming to the spirits of just men made perfect. Abraham and Isaac's voice, the just men made perfect. Read. To Yahshua the mediator. Then you look, you come all the way up to Yahshua. I'm talking about what Dr. Kenny took us up to. How can you go any further? Read. And to Yahshua, the mediator of the new covenant. To Yahshua, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. And to the blood of sprinkling. That speaketh better things than that of Abel. That speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, if who they escape him, not him that spoke, read that spake on earth, that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Now let's go back to. I'm going to get back to this. This y'all be taking on this shape and form. See, I had you reading Colossians, right? Now go over and give me Revelation 3, 14. And unto the messenger of the assembly of the Laodiceans, right? Right. These things saith the I am. These things saith the I am. The faithful and true witness. He's the faithful and true witness. Read. The beginning of the creation of Yahweh. Now that's the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. When Yahweh took on his shape and form, Dr. King many times said that Yahweh went out of the creating business. So he took on shape and form. Then we read John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And read. the Word was with Yahweh. They said the Word was with Yahweh. And the Word was Yahweh. They said the Word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning now with Yahweh. Now he said the Yahweh. word was the, the same was, was with Yahweh and the, it was the same with Yahweh, we read. All things were made by him. Now he says all things were made by him. Now I've heard there's two different batches. I never taught that. My book is saying all things were made by him. Read on. And without him. And without him. Was not anything made that was made. Without him was not anything made that was made. So that means that everything that was created as he took on this shape and form was made by Yahweh Elohim. That would mean that the angelic creation, both the righteous and the unrighteous, came forth by him. In your scripture lesson that you read, 9th chapter of Romans, 21st. Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against Yahweh? Now, now see how we get down here on this earth plane? We look in the mirror and look at ourselves, and we begin to complain about we'd like to have different type of hair, we'd like to have a different eyes. We like to, we'd get all kinds of go about all kinds of things. We like to make improvements upon ourselves. Some people go as far as the way to have plastic surgery and everything else done, just to look a little bit better. 
be. Why are we going to pry? How are we going to pry? Come to, to Yahweh about it. See, be content with what you have. Somebody else may not have the fortune you might have. But be content with what you have. Read on. Shall the thing form say Shall the thing to, form say to him that formed it? That formed it. Why hast thou made me thus? Why have you made me thus? Read. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Now, if he made it, and the way my book reads, it says he was pleased with it. Now, who am I to, to, to buck up against that? If you want to, I read over in Revelation, he said, when he created, in Genesis, he said, everything was very good. But now, read on. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Now, have not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump? Now, out of the same substance. The same substance. All of us came from the same substance. But now out of the same lump, what's he doing? To make one vessel unto honor. He's making one vessel unto honor. And another unto dishonor. And another vessel unto dishonor. Now who am I to say, I don't think he should make that vessel unto honor or that one unto dishonor. It pleases him. This is his will, his purpose. If I make something, you must say the thing is beautiful and everything else, and I go around and tear it apart. It's my, it's my creation. I do with what I want to do with it. I'm trying to get you to see that Yahweh's purpose, he had declared it, he had set it up, he's carried out, he's executed, he's carried it out. Now, when he makes the man, the prime of his creation, How did he make it? Now to get everybody's attention. <clears throat> oh, my voice will go me now. But now let's look at it. We didn't hear much about this in the church world, about how we were made. Be you have over there in the uh, first Thessalonians. I believe it's the fifth chapter in the twenty third verse. And the very Elohim of peace. The very Elohim of peace. Sanctify you holy. He says he sanctify you holy. Read. So that your whole spirit. That your whole spirit and soul. Your soul and body and body. Do what? Be preserved. Blameless, be preserved. Blameless. Blameless. Unto the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Unto the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Now he's saying that a man has a spirit, soul, and body. Dr. Kenny on many lectures told us what the soul was, told us what the spirit was, told us what the body was. He says a man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. We're going by the pattern. Spirit, soul, and body. Now the body that you and I have where did it come from? It came from this spirit. Materialization, spirit materialized. That means your body is spirit materialized. Then you got a spirit that animates this body. Give me first. John, not first John, John 1, 
and 9. The true light was that which lighteth every man. The true light was that which lighteth every man. That cometh into the world. That cometh into the world. So now when Yahweh made the man, he put within the man the sufficient amount of intelligence for him to know something about his creator. I said, that's the way he made the man. That's the spirit part of the man. The soul of the man. Dr. Kennedy described it. Several lectures you can go into. See, so the soul is the intellect part of man. His wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, his attributes make up that forms his soul. That's the part of you that I used the last time I was here, the reasoning part of you, which relates to your intelligence. That's the part that makes your soul. Now that part of you, and I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to level with you. I'm trying to tell you what I teach in Albuquerque. I'm, trying, I'm, going, down, I'm going down to show you why I'm saying what I'm saying. Because I feel that every one of us that's inside this building and outside of this building. All have souls that Yahweh is responsible for. This man that's created has his soul, this spirit, this body. When he's born, I do not see him being satanic. Somebody said, why you don't see it that way? Good question. The Messiah in Matthew, the 18th chapter, First verse. At the same time came the disciples unto Yahshua, saying, The disciples came unto Yahshua, saying, read, Who shall be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Read. And Yahshua called a little child unto him. Yahshua called a little child unto him. And set him in the midst of them. And set him in the midst of them. And said, And then he said, Verily I say unto you, Verily or truly I say unto you, Except ye be converted, Except you be converted, And become as little children, And become as little children. Hold it right there just for, for a moment. Now if he's using a child, Until he's had that, We should come as a little child. Then I say if he, if we were born satanic, why would he want us to become as a satanic being? To become as a kingdom of God. What is the state of a little child? A little child is innocent. I remember when Dr. Roger Jackson oftentimes referred to a little child running across the room, some butt naked. He has no shame, innocent. Same state and man that Adam was in back here, and Eve was in back here in the garden. Innocent. Now, there's a period of time that that child comes to know, be able to rationalize a reason between right and wrong. 
now, now refer to, Dr. Kennedy referred to it as the age of accountability. And he did teach it. He used when the Messiah was 12 years old, went up to the temple, taught his disciples. When his mother came and they missed him, turned around and went back to him. You got to go over there, there in uh, Luke. See? He came back and found him. And when the mother came back and found him, he says, Mother, I must be about my father's business. Accountable. The age of accountability. And the reason why I say that, and I want you to understand why I'm saying these things. I know you all, you, you, you've indicted me about a lot of things, and I'm, I'm trying to explain myself. And I, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to say it. I appreciate that. I do not see a man being born satanic for this reason. If he's born satanic, Give me Second Peter two four, Jude one and six. For well, if Yahweh spared not the angels that sin, mm -hmm. but cast them down to hell, cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, to be reserved unto judgment. Now, if I'm a satanic being at birth, and then I'm reserved in chains of darkness, everybody in this room will get up and preach. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. I'm not going to change. Can't be changed. That would mean that nobody in here would be saved. Now, on the other hand, well, that would be what right Peter said. Let's see what Paul said, but what, what, uh, 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 what Jude said. Jude 6. Mm -hmm. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. But left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. He, he what? He hath reserved in Everlasting chains under darkness. Everlasting chains under darkness. They, they confirm each other. Read on. Unto the judgment of the great day. Unto the judgment of the great day. Now, when you say you're born satanic, you then also give Satan the power to have power over life. And I don't see that. Satan don't have power over life. He's got power over death. Now, let's see we can raise let me go on further with this. Now we have where Satan was cast out of heaven, cast down into the airplane, and he reserved the chain of darkness. Now, what are angels? The book says angels are ministering spirits. Dr. Kennedy said when the Messiah walks around in an airplane, he cast demons out of men, gave his disciples power to, to do the same thing. So what was being cast out? Now I know what's being taught. I've heard what's being taught. I've looked at it, I've examined it, and I don't see it. And I'm being honest with you all. I think it's fair. Now, I'll show you reason, show you reasons why I don't, don't go along with it. And if I draw it wrong, correct me. I believe you're using the term a threefold negative entity. 
in couch within a body. And I understand you're saying this threefold negative energy got to be cast down. I guess I also got to say and out. If I got that right. Okay. Now, when that happens, then you say there's a threefold righteous entity gets put in. I guess my first question I want to ask, is this supposed to be representative of the soul? This will be representative of the soul. I know you say this is supposed to be spirit, soul, and body, right? So I, I've been keeping up with what's being said. Now, let's look at your book for a minute. I checked the Bible out, and when the Messiah came along, he said, That's the spirit part of you. There's a part to do that. That's the spirit part of you. There's also the part of you that reasons, that has the, the ability to say that's right and that's wrong based upon either proof or no proof. You're making a choice. That's the part of you that's your soul. Are you rejected it or accepted it? Now, when you take your scriptures, the way I look at it, the way I look at the thing, when you have the Messiah casting demons out of men, he's not casting the soul out of them. Because when you read the soul, is taking the part from the man the person died. You go there and look the eighth chapter by the 34th verse, you go over there in the uh, fourth chapter of Matthew, you've got plenty of places you read about demons being cast out of men. They're talking about the spirit being cast out, not the soul being cast out. When the soul 
departs a man, the man dies. But the spirit, and he likened this uh, the soul. I'm talking about Dr. Kenyon likened the soul to a man's mind. He says a man ought to sometimes change his mind, a lot of times for the better. You can't change your mind unless you have something that's, that you will accept better than what you have. So now I'm trying to convey to you that this spirit, this soul, and this here represent the body. Talk about this out of order. Making up the man. When that soul, spirit departs from the man, the man, you got all you got is shell left. That's what you see you put in the ground. Now the man's body is going back from which it came. The soul, spirit's going back from which it came, back into the Father. When you are breathing out of his nostrils of breath of life, he became a living soul. He was animated. He was innocent in his thought processes. He didn't know what death was. Now, I talk about, we, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain what we're talking about here. This man back here in the garden, innocent. And Dr. Kennedy refers to it in the textbook. Life after death. I think it's about 50 page, 56. First bite. Talk about Adam being innocent in his, in his conscience or soul. So now if a man's conscience, the soul, is innocent, and that was what, when he disobeyed the commandment of Yahweh, then he became condemned. And the condemnation fell upon all men. Let me verify that, but give me Romans 5. Pick it up at the 8th verse. But Yahweh commanded his love toward us. Now he says, Paul says, now Yahweh commanded his love toward us. Toward us. Why? Read. In that. In that. While we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners. While we didn't know him. We thought we were doing the best we could. We were going out to churches and being baptized and drunk and washed and eating Lord's Supper and doing all these things. We thought we were, we were praising him and glorifying him. While we were yet sinners. The we, Messiah died for us. He died for us. That death went back and picked up the man Adam and went down and picked up the last man being born in his purpose. Covered everybody. That while we were yet sinners, read. The Messiah died for us. Uh huh. Much more than, much more than, being now justified being by Being now his blood, justified by then, read. We shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be what? Saved from wrath through him. We're going to be saved through wrath, or we be saved from wrath through him. I'm talking about the wrath of Yahweh now. Through him, read. For if, when we were enemies, when we were enemies or when we were against him, read. We were reconciled to Yahweh. Then we were reconciled unto Yahweh. By the death of his son. By the death of his son. That when his man died to reconcile us back unto the Father. Read. Much more being reconciled. Much more being reconciled. We shall be saved by his life. We shall be saved by his life. In any words, he gave of his blood. The blood that was in his body drained out. That was his life. We shall be saved by his life. Read. And not only so, and not only so, but we also joy in Yahweh. We also joy in Yahweh through our Savior Yahshua the Messiah. Through our Savior Yahshua Messiah, read. By whom we have now received the atonement. By whom now we have received the atonement. We have received the atonement. Maybe I better chop something, do something with that first. <coughs> One day in the year, 
Yahweh required Israel to appear before him for the cleansing of the sanctuary, for the cleansing of Israel, the high priest, and the cleansing of the sanctuary, the day of atonement. Now, what did that entail? The high priest, he had offered a bullock for his own sins. He had to go and take that blood in before the, uh, into the holy place, only into the most holy place, and throw that blood toward the mercy seven times. Now, when he did that, he had to take incense put in this incensor, and that incensor made a cloud that covered this here sanctuary, this here mercy seat. Throw the blood toward it seven times eastward. Then he come back out, he offered up a goat between the two goats that they had to pick. They had picked two goats. One was a scapegoat, one was one under Yahweh. The one was under Yahweh had to be killed and take that blood in for the atonement of the children of Israel. He goes in through the door and on, and on into the holy place and on, and on into the most holy place with that incense and the blood. He goes in and throws the blood seven times now for the cleansing of the children of Israel. First he had to cleanse himself up first, then he goes and cleanses the children of Israel. Now the last time he goes through, it was for the cleansing of the tabernacle. Why? Because it's been tainted by the offering of all these sacrifices that had been offered up in this tabernacle. It was tainted now because of that. So now Yahweh's going to cleanse the sanctuary. So when he goes in and cleanses the sanctuary this last time, he puts on the garments of beauty and glory and goes in before Yahweh. Now that he got the garments of beauty and glory on, he's got the breastplate representing the 12 tribes of Israel, the bells and the pomegranates around the hymn of God representing the Gentiles. He's taken them with him into the presence of Yahweh to atone for the cleansing of the sanctuary. Now, when he does that cleansing of the sanctuary, the high priest witnesses something. After he threw that blood at the 21st time, he said, Yahweh owed him sitting upon the mercy seat. Now he knows that it, the, sanctuary, the, uh, the atonement had been accepted. He's got to come down out of that most holy place and come on down through the, that veil and on down in here. And when he gets out here, the high priest, the low priest down here, they hear that he's come down. Then they blow the trumpets, which lets no, let Israel, which was gathered around the tabernacle, know that the atonement had been accepted. And they were able to rejoice, but their sins had been forgiven for the whole year. Now, no, there was nothing. Oh, I better back up to this here, too. These vessels in his tabernacle, they represent these divine attributes of Yahweh, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. That's what these vessels in this tabernacle represent, which is likening to your soul. But now when he did this atonement, was any of these here vessels moved out? Did anything take its place? You don't have nothing being removed out of here, this, but this was for the cleansing of the sanctuary. When you accept Joshua's side, you're supposed to be cleansed from the sin through his blood. So a change has got to take place up here. A conversion has got to take place up here. So what I'm trying to get you to see is that Yahweh has set up in this tabernacle, he's showed in this tabernacle, nothing is being cast out, but atonement is being made by the blood of the sacrifices that had to be offered up in this here tabernacle. And I'm saying, may you and me, when we accept the blood of Yahshua's side, then we have overcome.
death we have overcome. See, sin. And that's what Paul was talking about there. Continue reading where you're at, please. Wherefore, Wherefore, as by one man, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Look, sin entered into the world by this one man, Adam. Not Eve. Dr. Kennedy taught me that Adam and Eve in this garden, when Moses up there, that second trip, that he left Adam and Eve in a loving care of each other, representing Joshua and his bride. She was not negative, he was not negative. She was not positive, he was not positive. They were both innocent. Now, when Satan deceived her, Satan didn't get to him, to Adam. That's why Paul wrote there. <clears throat> he was in the transgression, but Adam was. But nevertheless, he partook of the fruit of the tree. He disobeyed the commandment of the Yahweh. And by so doing, then death passed upon all men. That's what you're reading there in Romans. Continue reading there in Romans. Wherefore, Wherefore, as by one man, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and then death by sin. Now, when a man sins, this doesn't do it. This is what happens up here. It's conscious. That's what's got to be cleansed. That's what's got to be atoned for. And that's only atoned by the stepping of the blood of Yahshua Messiah. Now, when we have that, we're looking at Yahweh through his purpose down through the ages. He's purpose that mankind had to fall. Now, Yahweh, Elohim, who, be, who is the creator, Dr. Kennedy said, now this man here, and he was responsible for his creation. Therefore, he said that this man here, that was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Therefore, when he took on that shape before, that was the lamb slain back here. Witness to the children of Israel coming by the land of Egypt. They had to slay that lamb down here before they departed out of there. They said, this to go this way, and this to go this way. You'll find that Yahweh, when he took on this shape before, that was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, which indicated he was going to be responsible for his creation. So when that man disobeyed, that man, he had to come. He had to come in, shed his blood to atone for this man back here's sin. So when he died, went to the grave, raised from the dead. See, many of the sons that stepped in winter, Adam was in that number, coming up out of there. See, <clears throat> they come in after his resurrection. They will, and he, I know I'm saying he died for their sins. Paul is writing about it. Read on. Wherefore, <clears throat> wherefore as, as by one man. Wherefore, as by one man. Sin entered into the world. Sin entered into the world. And death by sin. And then death by sin. And now somebody wants to say, well, Adam didn't sin. Give me Genesis 3 and 12. Let's see what Adam said about, oh, stop it, start about 9, please. So we get the thought. <clears throat> Genesis 3 and 9. <clears throat> and Yahweh, Elohim, called unto the man and said unto him, Where art thou? Where art thou? This is Yahweh, Elohim, talking to the man. Where art thou? And he said, And he said, the man said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid. And I was afraid. Because I was naked. Because and, I was naked. And I hid myself. And I hid myself. Now, Dr. Kennedy said, as soon as that man touched the fruit, his reaction let you know he was disobedient because he headed for the bushes. Showing that he was condemned. Now, what did he say? He read. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Who told you that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Have thou eaten of the tree? Where I have commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm-hmm. And the man said, And the man said, 
the woman who thou gavest. Now he didn't start pointing. The woman that thou gavest to me. First he said, the woman that thou gavest to me. She, what, read? The woman whom thou gavest to me, with me, she gave me of the tree. She gave me of the tree. And I did eat. And I did eat. And Yahweh now, Dr. Kinsler, now that's an open confession that the man did eat, or he did disobey the commandment of Yahweh, so therefore he was a sinner. You see, if that, if, by him being a sinner, the Roman Catholics went down and built the church on Peter, and Peter, he was a confessed sinner. He said he might as well build it upon Adam, but he's a confessed sinner. The book's saying he's confessing to it. Peter confessed to it. I think it's in Luke 8 or 5 and 8. See, but the point I'm trying to get, I'm trying to show you that there was, they both confessed that they were sinners. Now the Messiah's coming in the Redeemer. Continue reading there in uh, uh, Romans there, please. Wherefore, as by one man <laughs> Wherefore, sin, as by one man sin, sin into entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin. Read. And so death passed upon all men. So then death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. For all had sinned. Read. For until the law, sin was in the world. Sin was in the world until the law. Now look, from Adam down to giving the law back here, sin was in the world. You know it was. If God would destroy the world there because of sin was in the world at that time, it was by the flood. You got 847 years after that, before the law was given. So death reigned even because through that. Read. For until the law, sin was in the world. Mm -hmm. But sin is not imputed but when sin, there is no law. Sin is not imputed when there is no law. Y'all yeah, didn't give a law back through here. Read. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Read. Even over them that had not sinned. Even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression. After the similitude of Adam's transgression. After Adam's sin back here. See, the death reign on all of them. See, all the way down. Read. Who is the figure now, of him. Now, he was a figure of him. That was to come. That was to come. Talking about Yahshua Messiah. See, now he was a figure of him before he transgressed. When he transgressed, he's not a figure because Yahshua was not going to transgress. He's going to be obedient even to the death of the cross. See, okay, read on. <clears throat> what verse are you at? 14? Okay, read on, please. But not yeah. as the offense. But not as the offense. So also is the free gift. So also is the free gift. Now, in other words, the offense was by one man, the free gift is going to be by one man. And as far as the free gift, the free gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit when you accept the blood of the Messiah. Read. For if through the offense of one, that through the offense of one, many be dead. Many be dead. Much more the grace of Yahweh. Much more the grace of Yahweh. And the gift by grace. And the death by grace. Which is by one man. Which is by one man. Yahshua the Messiah. Yahshua the Messiah. Hath abounded unto many. Has abounded unto many. Read. And not as it was by one that sinned. There was not as it by one that sinned. So is the gift. So then is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Now, he says, now, the judgment was by one unto condemnation. That's why Dr. King had asked up here the age of conscience. So now we got the conscience going down there. Man is condemned by his conscience. Peter, and he picks up there in Romans, the second chapter, showing how a man, his, uh, his conscience either excused him or, or accused him. See, but read on. But the free gift but is the free of gift. many offenses uh, unto justification. Unto justification, read. For if by one man's offense now, death by reigned one? by one, and death came by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, and the gift of righteousness, shall reign in life by one mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah. By one Yahshua the Messiah. See what verse is that? That was seventeen. Seventeen. I got to go down to nineteen. Read. Therefore, as by the offense of one. Therefore, by the offense of one. He's going back over again. Wherefore, by the offense of one. Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. 
decree. Even so, by the righteousness of one. Even so, by the righteousness of one. The free gift came upon all men. The free gift came upon all men. Unto justification of life. Unto justification of life. For as by one man's for disobedience. The, for as by one man's disobedience, Paul's repeating again. Many were made sinners. Many were made sinners. So many. by the obedience of one. Yeah, by the obedience of one. Shall many be made righteous. Shall many be made righteous. Okay. Now, what did we have back here during this time when Israel was back here at the mountain and wandering around in the woods? What did we have back here? What was going on? Let me have First Corinthians, uh, uh, pardon me, Second Corinthians, third chapter. <clears throat> do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we? As do we some mean? Others, do we? Do we? Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Uh huh. Or need we, as some others? Or need we, as some others? Epistles of commendation to you. Epistles of commendation to you. Or letters of commendation from you. Uh -huh. Ye are our epistles. Now I'm standing before you in an epistle. You're all reading me. I understand that. When you're on the floor, I'm reading you. That's the way it is. We're, this is what I call a big library. That's why we supposed to be quiet. This is what's being said. Read what's being said. Okay, read on. Ye are our epistles, uh -huh. written in our hearts. Written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. It says known and read of all men. They're going to know you by the way you walk, the way you talk. To so read. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of the Messiah. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of the Messiah, as if the if Yahshua was in you, read. Ministered by us. Ministered by them. When they preach the gospel and you receive it, then you're ministered by them. Read. Written not with ink. Written not with ink. Not like it was back here, see? And not written as that book you got in your lap called the Bible. See? Read. Written not with ink, mm -hmm. but with the spirit of the living Elohim. But the spirit of the living Elohim. How does he write in your book? How does he write? Messiah said in Matthew, <coughs> <coughs> pardon me, no, it's John 15, see? He said, by the the words, Joshua said, by my words you are 